Hi, this is Shelly with the Gray Wren Sewing and Crafts on Etsy and the Gray Wren Sewing and Crafts on Facebook. Today we're going to make some embroidered baseballs. Um, here are some of the materials that you need. I usually buy a bucket of balls at Walmart and here's one of the balls from the bucket. Um, then you also need 100% acetone to take off the lettering. I use cotton balls and um, some hand protection, plastic hand protection, so that I don't take off my nail polish. Um, I use a small pair of scissors to take the threads off. And then I also use this marker to uh, mark some things on the ball that I'll show you in a little bit. You will also need some curved needles, two of them and also uh, some push pins. Um, then you need to pick your threads. For this ball, we're gonna use black uh, one millimeter flat wax thread. This will be um, the thread that we use to relace the ball with. So we're gonna use black for this ball. I bought this from Amazon. Um, Amazon has a lot of different varieties, different stores. Um, Etsy also has different stores. Um, it just depends on the color that I need. I don't buy from one particular place, just as long as it's flat, uh, waxed, one millimeter thread. Then, um, like I said before, I, we pick the threads that we're going to use. This matches the baby nursery. Um, you also need uh, to bring in a pre-digitized file or make one of your own, but you need a USB port to transfer it to your embroidery machine. And of course you'll need embroidery hoops. Um, any type of embroidery hoop will work. Um, I recommend at least a five by seven to do this on. Um, this is a WSS uh, water soluble stabilizer that I put on top of my work that I'll show you in a little bit. And I also use sticky stabilizer that goes on the hoop. And then this helps take off the water soluble stabilizer at the end. So with all of these materials, um, I'll show you how to make an embroidered baseball. The next pictures are some of the baseballs that I've made in the past. When I first got started embroidering on baseballs, I joined the original baseball embroidery group on Facebook. So I want to give credit where credit is due. Okay, so before I embroider, I have to prepare my ball. So we want to take the stitches off of the ball. So I take my scissors and I just, I poke a hole here. I've already started it. And I just go along the seam. I clip like this. and you can see it's coming up. So after I um, cut my laces, then I wanna take a, a, the same color of pen or marker that I'm using with my laces, and I wanna mark one spot on the ball. This will help me line up my holes when I put the uh, leather back on the ball. Next, you wanna peel off one panel like this. Peels off real easy. And then you take a, a, a pen or a marker and trace the ball right here before you take off the next panel. I usually use a pen so that I don't accidentally get too much ink around my ball. Next, you want to pick off all of these um, old laces. You just go around and pick them off with your hands. 
So next I want to take um, my cotton ball and my acetone and remove my lettering. And I just do it in one line. It comes right off. And there is a clean uh, baseball panel. So now I'm in embroidery wear and I brought up my baseball template and then added um, the feet and the lettering that I wanted on the baseball. And this took me maybe five minutes to do. It's real easy through embroiderywearsoftware.com. Since this is not a video on how to digitize, um, I'm not going to go into great detail here. However, um, I encourage you to look at my YouTube channel because I do have a few videos on how to get started in this pretty cool program. Next, we want to embroider the template that we lay our leather on. Uh, the template that we have is a 5x7. Right now, I have an 8x8 um, frame on my machine, so but it does work with a 5x7. You want to make sure that your hoop has sticky stabilizer on it. And um, we go ahead and so we start with our template. Next, we want to put our leather panel on uh, the template. Now this line is the inside line here where these holes are at. And the main reason that is is so that you don't put your embroidery beyond these lines so that you're not stitching into the holes. So the trick is is to turn your hoop upside down and take your panel on that side and match it up. See how I have my um, embroidery lines right on the holes of the baseball leather. Once I do that, then I pin it on the ends. I do not pin in the center. Um, a hard lesson learned, when I pinned in the center, it caught my needle. Uh, my presser foot from the embroidery machine caught on it and ruined the ball. So I only pin on the ends. So you put both panels on this way. Next, I clip on um, on the corners of my embroidery machine hoop, uh, WSS, this water soluble stabilizer, and it's on top of my leather. Now you're ready to embroider. Next, we want to uh, clip all of our jump stitches with the little scissors and then pull the WSS um, off top. And that's where the tweezers come in handy because you can get in um, all these little areas with the tweezers and pull it off. If you're not successful in the tiny little areas, you can take a wet cloth and run it over top of those tiny areas and the WSS will wash away. I choose not to do that as much as possible because then it gets a little sticky and I can't stand a sticky ball. Now that we have the ball cleaned up, the ball panels, um, next we want to put them back on the ball. So we take an end of the um, panel here and see the line that I drew earlier. I match that up. And then I take a stick pen and I put it in. Then I go around. I follow my lines. And you gotta stretch it a little now I'm on the other end and I put another stick pin in, like this. And sometimes you have to move it to stay on the line that you drew previously. Okay, then you take your other one, you find your mark, my mark is right here, and you find the mark on the ball which is right here, and you line them up. Like this. 
and you put another stick pin in. So here's my ball with my stick pins in it. And notice how I have a little gap still, and that's okay. But the gap is even all the way around. Next, I take my thread, and I have um, 180 inches of thread here because I'm going to double it. So you take it through one end of your, your needle and pull it to the middle. Then I take the other end and even it up and put it through my needle and pull it through. Okay, so next I put the ball in my lap and I make sure that my V's are pointed upwards. You don't want it to be down. You want it to be up. Then you take the left side and you put your needle through and pull about halfway. Then you take your right needle and you put it in the right side and pull the rest of the way. And this gives you your starting point pegged like that. So now what I want to do is get my two needles even and pull straight so that I get this directly in the center. Do you see how I'm pulling straight? And I have it directly in the center of my ball right now. Okay. I put it back in my lap. I wear a shirt that's loose or I put a dish towel on my lap so that I can put my needles on my shirt or my dish towel. And it's right. So I go over right and I pull through then I put it in my shirt like that then I pick up this next needle and I go over left and you do that pattern the whole way and then you pull tight You take your left needle, go over right. I put this one in my shirt and I take this needle and I go over right or over left, I mean. And I pull tight. So now I've um, done several stitches and I've pulled them tight doing the same pattern around and this is what I have so far. Okay, so now I'm at the end of my ball. I have my laces all the way around and I'm in the last two holes. So I take my left, keeping the same pattern going, I take my left and I put it right here. I go under and up. Just like that. Can you see that? and I pull and I keep my finger here so I don't get a knot and see how it stays in that groove okay and I take my other needle and I want to keep the same pattern going so the other one goes right here under and up See how I have that going there? And I pull through. I usually keep my finger there to help it. And it stays right in that same groove. Then I take my scissors and I clip it off and then I push it down in. Just like that. And you're done. And here's the finished ball. So if you like what you see, like and subscribe. Click down below and make some comments about videos that you would like me to make and I'll make some more videos. Thank you.